Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video we saw how we can get the moment of inertia or calculate the moment of inertia of a long thin bar of length L and mass M. We did that by using integration, which is the right technique, but we can also do it by numerical methods. So what we're going to do here is kind of set the stage by trying to find the approximate moment of inertia of the same bar with the same length L and the same mass M, but first by dividing into two sections, then dividing into four sections, and then you can see how you extrapolate. You divide by eight sections, 16, and so forth, and eventually, if you set it, if you subdivide it enough sections, you can get the exact moment of inertia of the bar if the number of sections becomes large enough. In the end, of course, it needs to be an infinite number of sections. But let's go ahead and see how we set the stage here by doing it for two sections and four sections. Then on the next video, we'll do it for n sections that n approaches infinity. So what we're going to do here is say that the total moment of inertia in this case is going to be approximately equal to the moment of inertia of the first section plus the moment of inertia of the second section. Now what we're going to do is we're going to assume that all of the mass of each of the sections is at the center of mass of each section. That means that the distance from the point of rotation, the center mass, that would then be the distance r, so where we have the mr squared formula. So that means that this is going to be approximately equal to, that would be mr squared, so that would be the mass. Now the mass of this section would be m divided by 2, and the distance would be one quarter the length, so it would be one quarter the length, and we need to square that plus the moment of inertia of the second section, again, would be half the mass, m times the distance squared, in this case, would be three quarters the length, quantity squared. So let's go ahead and add that up and see how close we get to the actual value of the moment of inertia of a thin bar. So this is approximately equal to, that would be uh, 16 times two, that's 32, that would be a one over 32 ml squared plus and here there would be 16 plus 2, 32, that would be plus 9 over 32 ml squared. When we combine those two, that would be equal to 10 over 32 ml squared. And of course, let's go ahead and calculate what that is equal to. 10 divided by 32, we get 0 0.3125, 0.3125. ML squared. Notice that only with two segments we get very close to the actual value. So not bad with two sections. Let's see how close we get when we use four sections. So here we can say that I would be equal to the, or not equal to, but approximately equal to the, the sum of the moment of inertia of the four individual sections. So that means that it would be approximately equal to, we need to do that now for all four. So in this case, each, the mass of each section would now be a fourth, so it would be the mass, m over four, times, it would be one-eighth the distance, so L divided by eight, quantity squared, m r squared, for example. Then this would be plus, again, one-fourth the mass times three L over eight squared, plus m over four, times 5L over 8 squared plus M over 4 times 7L over 8 quantity squared. So adding all those up should get us pretty close to the actual value of the moment of inertia. Simplifying this, that would be 64 times 4 would be 256. That would be 1 over 256 ML squared plus that would again would be uh, 256, that would be 9 over 256 ml squared plus, that would be 25 over 256 ml squared plus, that would be 49 over 256 ml squared. So when you add all those up, that would be 50, 75, 84, that would be 84 over 256 ml squared, and with a calculator, let's see how close we got on this one. 84 divided by 256, that gives us 0 0.38125. And notice, we're getting very close to the actual value by only going to four individual segments. So you can see when you go to 8, 16, 32, 64, and so forth, 
you're going to get very, very close very quickly to the actual moment of inertia. And that's what we call using the numerical method to find the moment of inertia. So next we're going to set it up so that we can solve for n segments and as n approaches infinity we should get again the exact value. So that we'll do on the next video to see how we can conclude this method using the numerical method to find the moment of inertia. And that's how it's done.